joined now by Susan Phillips. She's a volunteer with Safe Wings Ottawa. We actually caught her while she's out and about uh, doing what Safe Wings does, which is uh, look for injured birds uh, in and around Ottawa. Good morning, Susan. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the things that I've been doing is I've been stuck at home is uh, we've had, you know, bird feeders over the winter in our backyard, but uh, as spring is coming and birds, other, you know, birds are returning from the normal migration, we've noticed uh, a, a lot more and different kinds of, of, of species that are coming along, which certainly adds color to the morning and is something to look for with the kids. What are, what are some of the, the birds that people might be able to see in their backyards uh, these days as they might uh, be home more than they otherwise would and so can spend a little more time looking at the feeder? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there's, there's so many birds that you can possibly see. I think one of the exciting things about backyard birding is seeing all the regular birds, but then every once in a while something exciting shows up or the first bird of the season. So yesterday I saw my first eastern phoebe, and if you watch birds for years over years, you kind of know when they're going to come back. So the phoebes, I heard the flickers this morning, um, grackles, the robins, they sort of, you know, sometimes hang around in the winter time, but there's more and more now, and you watch them getting ready to nest, so they're gathering leaves and sticks and chasing each other. So, I mean, there's, you know, there's endless numbers of birds you might be able to see in your backyard. It would be impossible to list them all. So, so here's some of the ones that I've seen. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the most common, that I think, uh, and they stuck around all winter, would be... Uh, various types of sparrows. I think they're house sparrows, but what are what are some of the cool things about those? House sparrows are actually uh, an introduced species to North America. They're not a native North American bird, but they're, they're neat birds. They're they're sort of very gregarious. They hang around together and, and you know they chatter away. So you might be walking past the bush and you hear this constant little chattering, and there's all the house sparrows. Um, there's other kinds of sparrows that you might see, depending on where you live. I'm not sure they get a lot sort of in, say, downtown. But right now the song sparrows are, are back and they're singing and uh, looking for their mates. Um, in a few weeks we'll probably see what are called chipping sparrows, which are really cute little, tiny little sparrows, but very pretty and very noisy. They make a very loud trilling sound, so you might hear those in the trees. Other um, sparrows are mostly sort of passing through, so... So, so see them while them. you can. Yeah. The other yeah. one, the, the first bit of color I saw was a house finch, which I guess is also an introduced species. They're, well, they're a western species, and <laughs> they've, they've gradually sort of moved east over the years. There was a big peak of, oh, I'd say maybe 10 years ago, and they sort of dwindled a little bit. There's an eye disease that goes around amongst them, and that has uh, reduced their numbers a little bit. But yeah, house sparrows are very pretty. They're sort of a red, red and streaky um, little sparrow. There's another, it's not a, no, house, uh, what are we talking about? House finches. House, then, sorry, that's what I meant, a house finch, yeah. Yes, house finches. And then there's what's like called a purple finch, which sometimes it's hard to tell from a house finch. But uh, if you see one, a bird that kind of looks like it's been dipped in raspberry juice, that's what they say distinguishes them, that's probably a purple finch. Okay. And they're a bit migratory, too, so you might see them in the spring and maybe the fall, but I don't think they nest sort of in the Ottawa city area. Now, in terms of some of the bigger birds that might be coming through, um, we, you know, I've seen a lot more of the red-winged blackbirds and yeah. uh and then, and then grackles, which, uh, you know, when we were talking before, I described them as jerks because they just <laughs> seem to come in and push all the other little birds away. <laughs> yes. Yeah, lots of people don't like grackles. But, uh, I mean, so you've got a feeder that you're inviting all the birds for dinner, so they're all going to come. And, and obviously the bigger ones, the grackles, the blue jays, sometimes even the red-winged blackbirds, the starlings, They'll sort of come in and chase everybody else away, and they, you know, clean out your feeder, so you go and fill it again, and hopefully the little birds will be able to get in there in between. Because a lot of birds tend to sort of move around in flocks, so they'll go from one feeder to another. So in between, when they're not there, 
the other birds get a chance to get in and, and feed. Now, if um, if people are looking to uh, you know catch some of these birds as they're you know, meta- not literally obviously, but uh, <laughs> you know encourage visiting by some of these birds as they're as they're passing through, and they might want to have something to you know see on their their back deck or in their backyard. What are some of the, the best things you can do for setting up an environment where they might want to stop at a theater? Well, it's always good to have um, trees nearby cover for the birds because they need to be able to escape if a raptor comes by or, a cat, God forbid, a cat comes by. So uh, trees, brush ponds, somewhere where they can sort of fly and hide if necessary. Um, a mixed variety of seeds and feeders is always good because some birds can't perch at the smaller feeders and other ones like a, you know, just a little perch and they can just feed away at smaller seeds. Um, there's all sorts of information online on different types of feeders and obviously there's some good things in the area that will help you. Um, we always recommend at Safe Wings that the feeders should be either at least 30 feet away from your house or within about two feet of the house. Just to minimize the risk of birds colliding with your windows if they are startled from the feeder, if, they, if they're close to the house and they don't get enough speed to do major damage if they hit the window. But if, if the feeder is sort of, you know, 10 feet away and they get startled, they'll fly into the window. That can be not, uh, not good for them. And the sorts of things you can do to make your window safe are putting lots of dots on it? Putting lots of dots, yeah. There's, there's all sorts of different treatments, again, um, you can do, uh, sometimes even in the springtime, if you just want something temporary because some birds are seeing their reflection in your window and they're just pecking at it, even, you know, soap or whitewash or something like that that will wash off eventually. But there are other more permanent window treatments available um, depending on, you know, what whether you want to do it yourself or whether you want to get somebody to do it for you. It's uh, obviously cost varies. Now, I have a screen on my window, which, which probably helps. Yes, yeah, an, yeah. an external screen is, is definitely a, a good solution. Or and you could just not wash your windows, and that probably Or you could just not. <laughs> well, it, it does to a certain extent, but uh, <laughs> we, we, we would still recommend uh, treating your windows because what, what happens is the bird either sees a reflection of mm-hmm. a tree or something, or they, if they can see straight through a window, they don't realize that there's a solid... Uh, barrier in between, they, you know, they don't recognize glass as an, as an object. And many the, the, sorry, go on. Oh, well, I was going to say many of the birds that you know we pick up that are, are window collisions um, are migrating birds, so they're coming from the boreal forest or they're coming from the south. And they, you know, they, they must, they're not used to cities; they don't live in cities. So. Uh, uh, so, and, and it's a, a worthwhile reminder too. If you find a, a an injured bird, to call Safe Wings Ottawa, and you have your number on uh, your website, which I think is SafeWingsOttawa.ca, but that, they'll give, yeah, provide yeah. advice. Uh, yeah. one, one final question: We're, um, you know, we're second week of April now. What's the um, what's something that we might see in the next couple of weeks that that hasn't come by yet that you're looking forward to maybe catching in your backyard? Um, well, so some of the birds that are insect eaters are going to start showing up. I mentioned the Phoebe earlier. They're, they're insect eaters and they're early migrants. So other types of fly catchers, um, backyard birds. You might not. You might see swallows overhead. They're not going to come to your finger, absolutely. But swallows and other birds that catch insects on the wing. Um, Things like rose-breasted grosbeaks, those are always a favorite because the males are beautiful. Um, scarlet tanagers. And then later in April and starting early May, we get the warblers. And those are wonderful little birds. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for asking. Okay. Susan Phillips is a volunteer with Safe Wings Ottawa. Uh-